Hi everyone and welcome back to another amazing episode of the Out of Character Adventure Podcast. With me, your DM, George. And I am Marcus Womble, one of the players tonight. Nice. And over here is... Oh, hi, I'm John. I'm the one that you probably have nightmares about because I'm so loud. Do you have to yell loud? Sorry, not sorry. George, you have any, any words for us? Uh, I do not have any words today, unfortunately, except a good thank you to the folks over at Sirenscape for Thank their, you to Sirenscape. Their awesome <sighs> audio. No. No. I just stole that from John. What do I throw at you? Nothing. So many options. Whatever you throw, you can never get it back. Yep. It's just a conspiracy against me. It's not a conspiracy. It's not a secret at all. Let's get into our fantastic show for today. It's time for Out of Character Adventure Podcast. You were you were shaking them titties pretty well. I don't know, made me out of breath. Story time. What so George? last time on the Out of Character Adventure podcast? <laughs> podcast. The Out of Character Adventure podcast. Our merry band of intrepid adventurers found themselves making their way to the small village of Orthana Farms. Oh my God, podcast. On their travels, they spotted an owl. They I did. ran into a small troop of nomadic hunters. Darren made quick work of uh, pissing off perhaps <laughs> one of their uh, leaders or whatnot. They make their way to the farms uh, a little late, having to spend the night at the Broken Stallion Inn, waking up, coming out to find... There are four stables, apparently, that compete for best horses within this small farm village. They head towards the Axiom stable and quickly find themselves with some horses in tow. <laughs> because Ashlock said, fuck the rest of this town. <laughs> We're out. On their way out, Darren shows some actual progression in his character as he makes an effort to right a wrong he sees he has done. In doing so, picks up some rations, and with that, we pick up where we last left off. Our two adventurers on horseback making their way hold to on, the on. city of White Rough. Yeah, you're still on. I'm still on. So, uh, got a lot of travel to go. <laughs> uh oh. Whoa. But all you're gonna get out of me while I'm on a horse. Hey, hey, Ashlock, you remember those breathing techniques we talked about? They help yeah. chill you out when you're nervous around a bunch of people. Yeah, try, yeah, try, yeah, try, yeah. Uh. yeah. Try it right now. Okay, no, nope. <laughs> fluid, fluid breaths. One in, one out. Oh, that was a lot, a lot better. All right, now find the rhythm of the horse and just follow with it. There you go. It's a lot better. Oh, like this? A little, little less stiff. You look like a piece of wood just sticking out of the horse's back. Let's, let your watch. Let your shoulders bounce with it. Are you, are you standing up? Nope. I, I try to bounce, but like bounce my whole body. No, nope. stop that. Relax your hips and just bounce the upper half of you. I start sliding off the side. No, no. <laughs> not, not that bad. Okay. I done already lost it. I'm off the horse. 
feel like this is going to be a 65 gold down the drain for me. 66? 66. Uh, all right, all right. I'll grab Get back on. I, I go get back on. I'm going to go over, you know, keeping your legs tight, letting your hips relax, sink into the saddle, and following the horse's movement, bouncing up and down. If we ever start going up a hill, you're going to lean into the horse. If you start going down, you lean back, get a little tight. Basic horse riding techniques. Okay, so just kind of pushing against gravity on those hills. Yep. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. Let's try this again. Oh, great point. Science. The mechanisms you like to use. Yeah. When one is going somewhere... And there's a oddly shaped one. You have to make sure it doesn't get too weighted to one side, and you have to count away, right, to make sure it comes back. Yeah. That's what you need to do with your body. Right now, you're putting too much weight or force to one side, so you keep falling off. You got to counterweight. Find okay. the rhythm that the clock is moving, aka the horse. And just stay in tune with that. Think of yourself as a gear piece and a clockwork that you have to move smoothly with the horse. Okay. Try that. I try that. Can I use animal handling using my intelligence instead? Just go ahead and roll animal handling. We're going to go with one of those cool rules. Oh. But no, it's just a 17 instead. With a better mechanical understanding of what exactly it is you need to do you find it easier to trot along with this horse and you start gaining a feeling for it. You're making progress towards fully learning how to ride. You all carry on and you make short work of the trip to Ormondshire. Uh, you spend about a day and a half making your travels and you make it back to the city of Ormondshire, or at least surrounding it its perimeter you continue onward right yeah yeah straighting uh heading straight towards the Entergrove forest yeah we just ride forward and when we stop to rest for the night we're gonna alarm spell around and even if i'm asleep i'm gonna tell johnson to keep an eye out yeah I like to help him okay since with that, I assume, Ashlock, you're taking first watch? Uh, I guess I am. All right, go ahead and give me a perception check. With help. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three. Uh, that's a five. Thanks for nothing, Johnson. Oh, did having my Johnson out distract you? Apparently it did. <laughs> five perception? Yes. With your five perception... Um, everything seems still within the night. The crackling of the fire, the soft cricket sounds over surrounding you. There's still a bit of warmth that emanates from the ground. Um, as not too long since the sun went down. But there you sit, just idling by. Not really, not really paying much mind. You're still focused. I'm, I'm definitely nursing some calves right now and some uh, thighs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your your thighs are in pain. If you've never ridden a horse before, I have a little bit. And so that sitting, little bit was rough. Are you talking about Marcus now? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sitting down's a bit of a sore subject for you right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a bitch, but nonetheless, you keep an eye out as best you can. As best you can, at around. The six-hour mark of your rest, you feel it's time to kind of wake up Darren. Uh, but before you even get a chance to, Darren, you feel a slight tingle, and you f- hear a, a register on your... But does that let me know where at? Like on no. I jump up, cast light. Go, hey, hey. Go ahead and give me a perception check. 15. Uh, your light spreading across the small 
or slightly tall grass of this flat plains you're on, kind of looking about. He can't seem to spot the source of your dis- of the disruption. As he jumps up, <clears throat> I'm gonna pop out Rodney, mm-hmm. and then just have Rodney start doing laps around. All right. Hey, uh, grab my shoulder, and Johnson's gonna go in the opposite way that. Well, to kind of paint the picture, you all stir awake. This kind of small clearing of probably common used for camping here and there since it's slightly off the main road. These golden wheat-like grass that kind of come to about uh, mid-thigh slightly uh, for both of you. You see these small thin trees that kind of surround you and right as you all put the command on your uh, respective familiars or artificial minds I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative 13 12 Ashlock okay 12 all right. Don't, doesn't Ashlock and Darren always get like one number out of each, like away from each other yeah, initiative? Much. okay that's what I thought Oh, point of order. Does my bracers, I know at one point you said we have like a quick draw on scrolls. Mm -hmm. Do they still have it? Yes. Yeah, buddy. Through the thick of the night, there's a quick rustle through the high brush. Then with a dash streak of leather oiled slick blackness comes crashing towards Ashlock as this paw. Did you get up? Yeah. yeah, it was. He was like, on his watch. Well, he could have been watching and not be standing. True. I'm the but one standing with the the light source, and yelling. Whenever you did that, I jumped up, and popped out. Oh, Rodney. I just wanted an excuse for it to jump at me and to use my new bracers. <laughs> it's really it comes at you, and. It seems to go for a paw strike, but instead you feel a gust of wind as a some sort of tendril comes in your direction. You, surprised at the direction of the attack, are caught off guard as this creature strikes out with a 22. That'll hit. Dealing three points of piercing de- uh, correction. Uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage. That's a big. And correction. another. Can we go with the first? <laughs> and another one point of piercing damage, as this tentacle comes crashing into your form, leaving these bruisings uh, across you. And right as the first makes its strike, you feel another gust of wind, as another strike comes in your direction. But this time, you are ready. Now knowing where the affront is coming from, you quickly dodge out of the way and you see another one of these tentacles come slamming down onto the floor and retracting. You now see this panther-like form, but a little more alien, a little more angular in its features. And these two large looming tentacles come writhing into the air as you see a... Go ahead and give me a history check or a nature check. Would I have advantage since I kind just of the have DC a list is lower? Of, okay. Yeah. Is it that low? Probably not. Let's see, uh, eleven. Eleven. Yes, you recognize this as one of the features or one of the creatures that you saw in the description of what things you might face on your travels. It is a displacer beast, and with that, the creature comes to a rest standing before Ashlock and Darren it is your go mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all right uh, first off uh, the grass around us how dead alive does it look uh, it still seems fairly alive the coloring just that seems hay like just seems to be a natural kind of uh, pigmentation to it, so it's still relatively live. Okay. Grass. Okay. 
hay, hay is actually quite green before you cut it and it dries. Okay, cool. So that's why I was like, mm. uh, John knows that. John's backwards. All right. I was afraid about fire, but now I'm not. I mean, you imagine if you put enough effort into it, you could get it to camp. Yeah, I was more worried about like just a little fire and just right. everything burning to the ground. Um, I will cast a chromatic orb and I'll do fire damage. You have disadvantage. Right, right. John knows this. As you see this creature, as it comes to a halt, its form shimmers and shifts ever so slightly, enough to put a uneasiness to your attack. I'll spin my staff, see that as I'm flicking off the energy, go, oh, what the fuck? 14. A 14 hits. 16 points of the fire damage. You let out a moat of chromatic light as it turns a bright red comes crashing down into this creature and you see its form shift into a more solid more concentrated form and you see it kind of let out a growl as it turns its attention towards you and then shifts it back to ashlock a little more on edge but still willing to put up a fight hey do you want to catch it No. And Rodney will come sweep down right next to me. Yep. And uh, it'll start spouting off information into this animal's brain, and it makes an intelligent saving throw. So that's a one. <laughs> so that'll be one psychic damage. All right, it's something. So with that, you see its head kind of shift. And stutter a little bit, but it quickly shakes it off. Shake it off. And that'll bring it back to the creature. You see it shift around, kind of almost like a prow, slowly takes step after step, putting itself at a more advantageous position, setting uh, Ashlog between it and Darren. So the creature once again lashes out two times. This time you see its form regain that shimmer we totally could have like put the movable rod on top of it and slowly like just train it to be our pet that's all i'm saying yeah. the first attack is an 18 <laughs> that hits the next one is a 24 which both hit. that also hits you take 12 points of bludgeoning damage and nine points of piercing damage 21 yes how do you look? Like I'm about to not be here very long. Uh-oh. You feel two quick lashes. First, there's a bludgeoning impact, and <laughs> then you feel the pronged edges of this ten- uh, tentacle come crashing into your form, finding divots into your armor, and leaving these large, gaping wounds now starting to sum- uh, amass, and you feel the warmth of your blood start pouring down. Now it is Darren's turn. What do you do? Does this thing look fast? It definitely looks lithe enough to be quick. Okay. Uh, gonna yell out. Mm-hmm. Hey, run away. This would be a good time for me to test these bracers. And I'll throw out a ray of frost. 13? Uh, 13 just hits. Nice. It's four cold damage. Alrighty. And its speed is re- reduced by 10. Okay. You lash out with this beam of cold and it just frosts the creature over not only reducing its form back to its more natural state but also giving this nice uh, frost covered coat to the creature and you see its breath kind of pouring out of its mouth so with that Ashlock what do you do Uh, I am going to disengage from this creature and run behind Good friend, Darren. All righty. About five feet of space in between the two of us. Sounds good. And I also, it's been a while since I've done this. It's been a while. But uh, so the next time I hit him with information overload, Mm -hmm. uh, the next attack against him will have advantage. Okay. So it should cancel that out. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I like that. Again, this creature sees you leave. It tries to maneuver to try to get at you but you 
move out of the way and quickly dodge any attacks that it would have incurred on you. But now it just sees both of you in close quarters to each other and just starts slowly but methodically making its way over to you. This creature now still that thin sheet of ice dra uh, draped over it comes lashing out at both of you. One attack each. First attack against Ashlock is going to be a 25. That, that'll that hit. And the second attack going against Darren is going to be a natural one. Cool. The one against Ashlock, okay. you take 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Nope. I fall down. Unconscious. And it's still part of the same attack, so regardless, you fall unconscious. Uh, this quick, sudden impact knocks you across the head, and you just see darkness envelop you as you fall. Darren, you see Ashlock take a strong hit across the dome, and you see him recoil and fall prone on the ground. This fresh wound pouring blood from his head. Mm -hmm. The creature now turns to you and its form regains that shimmer. Okay. It is your turn. Uh, I will come over here. Bend down. And I will action feed him a healing potion. All right. Go ahead and roll 2d4. Ooh, ooh. So four and a two. So it's six plus two, eight. So as quickly as you went down, your you feel your wounds start to kind of slowly heal as you come to Ashlock. Uh, you feel your breath kind of regulate a little bit. You're still a bit sore, but you're up. Now, Darren, anything else you'd like to do? Uh, like how I just moved right there. I just kind of want to be like imposing in between. Okay. Ashlock, your turn. I will stand up. Still within range of me, right? So you get up, and yes, you're still within melee range. And then I will disengage again and run okay. behind this tree. All right, so that's 15, right? You move yourself to safety behind the tree. The creature now has one target ahead of it. And also, I'm sorry, bonus action. I will move Rodney over next to... All right, Rodney moves into position. Darren, there are two attacks going against you. The first one's going to be a 16, which I believe misses... Yep, bounces off my scales. And the second one is going to be a 25. Yep, that's fine. Seven points of bludgeoning damage and two points of piercing damage for a total nine. of nine points. One tentacle comes lashing out at you, but it seems to overestimate your position and whiffs. The second attack seems more poised and ready. It comes crashing against the side of your arm and you feel a bruise start to form. And with that, it is Darren's turn to retaliate. Staying in the position I'm in, I will sit there for a little bit with my back to him. Yep. I, already knowing the trajectory, I will subtly cast Catapult and fire a hot piece of wood out of the campfire straight into his neck. All right. Let's see if he can perceive the fire. That's going to be a yes, so... No disadvantage imposed, but with a 13, I believe he still fails. Yes, he does. So nice. go ahead and roll damage. Damage. 21 points of bludgeoning damage mm -hmm. to it. Um, was that stick perhaps on fire? Um, I'd say with the velocity that it gets tossed, the fire would have been extinguished. It doesn't still get like hit with hotness. Oh, yeah, it Maybe still got like a D4. Hit. Not enough to deal extra damage. It's just mainly hitting it and then bouncing off. But its form is reduced to a more susceptible uh, form. And then I'm going to turn around and just loom over this beast as much as I can. All right. You do so. Darren. I mean, Ashlock. Your turn. Can... <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll just have Rodney do another information overload on him. All right. Uh, so that'll be another intelligence save. 
DC 14. This time it's going to be a 10, which I believe still fails. Yes. And uh, another thing I forgot that I can do with it is uh, when I hit expend a uh, spell slot and do an additional 2d8. Okay, cool. So it's a d10 plus d8 or just... It's 3d8. Okay. So that'll be 11 and the next attack has advantage. That'll bring us back to the creature. Fuck that creature. This creature, already's eye set on Darren, makes another two attacks against him. This time I will preemptively shield and use a charge. So we have a 12 and we have a 15, which both miss with this. Good job, Darren. Large barrier coming up. These two tentacles come crashing against this magical force. At least we know it works. (laughs) (laughs) and it just kind of growls with exasperation it just starts stalking back and forth in the same position just trying to huh pacing yeah pacing in the same uh spot just back and forth just kind of lashing out and letting out a cry every once in a while but that'll bring us to darren kind of baby displacer beast um I'm going to call back to you and say, hey, keep running. And I'll misty step, and then I'll hit it with a ray of frost. Okay. 21. Hits. Five cold damage. Another thin sheet of ice covers this creature as its form is reduced once again to a more susceptible state. Anything else you'd like to do, Darren? Call out to Ashlock. Oh, Jack can get away. Ashlock. Your turn. I I will have uh, Rodney pump mm-hmm. another information overload into him. Are you expending another slot? No, I'm not. Not okay. this one. Fourteen. Uh, that just saves. Okay. And I take uh, thirty feet of movement away. Very good. You are now in the thick brush. Now the creature sees two enemies fleeing away going to move to the closest one and two strikes come lashing out against Darren that's going to be a soft 20 and a critical hit I will use another charge to get rid of that soft 20 okay you take 20 points cool that's a number it's a big number yeah and it just lets him out lets out another growl and with that its form re-emerges with this shimmer and displacement. Darren, what do you do? Well, first I cry because I'm at one hit point. <laughs> and then I will bonus action Misty Step. Alrighty. Into the thick of it. And I will cast... Hide. <laughs> cast Fuck You. Do I go for damage or do I go for slowing it down? It seems to still be able to catch up, so I'm going to go for damage. A firebolt. Even with slowing it down? Huh? Even with slowing it down? Yeah, it's been able to catch up every time. Okay. Oh, well, you are missing stepping and not moving. <gasps> Look, some things... <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm going to just do another ray of frost. 22 hits. Just ignore the fact that I rolled a nat 20 on disadvantage. That's fine. That's whatever. Seven points of cold damage. Seven points and its speed is reduced yet again. And I'm going to run this way. Ashlock. Rodney will move just a little bit over and start pumping information into his brain. Ah, pump it. That's going to be a 13. 13. All right, uh, so I'll spell slot this one. Ooh, shit, that's a 19. Ooh, 19. With that, you see a large pool of blood start pouring out of its ears. You see its legs tremble, and it almost buckles once, twice. And you see its eyes almost lull, and it's just in a fit of just desperation at this point. It is visibly on its last leg. 
I will then run 30 feet towards it, screaming my head off at it, waving my arms in an attempt right. to make it run away. Okay. Oh. Give me an intimidation check. Hey, do y'all want to guess if I'm good at inti- intimidation? No. No. I figured that you would be amazing at it. Okay, well, uh, 14 minus 1, so it's a 13. Even its weakened state, it seems to be um, feral enough to resist any intimidation effects you might be trying to put on it. Cool, 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 cool. So, with that, how well did that work for you? It didn't. This creature is going to take a step forward, lumbering slowly and just try to take two attacks against Ashlock. It seems in its weakened state, its attacks are faltering with a nine and an 11. A tentacle goes way wide, just falls flat on the ground and like struggles to reel it back in. Another one comes, makes contact, but its force is laughable and it just seems pathetic at this point. Its form reshifts to that shimmer, but even that seems to be in a staggered state. Darren. Yeah, I'll just... Kobe, throw a fireball up and over Ashlock. All right. Straight roll. Straight roll, because it's information overload. 15 plus 8. That's 9 plus 1 fire damage because of my staff. 10 points of fire damage. You step... You stab your staff down on the ground and you see the crystal light up and it just spins fervently and you see a moat of large flame bead out and just come crashing into the form of this displacer beast and it actually knocks it into uh, half of the fire and its form falls flat, dead. Start walking up. Look at Ashlock. Thump him on the forehead. What the hell? I collapse. No. Why? You're just going to run at something? Well, it looked like it was about to die. I thought maybe it'd run away. Ashlock. Yeah. I love you. You're my best friend. You're not that scary. That could be scary. Okay. I'll just turn around and then jump, turn around, go. Ah! See if I can scare. Uh, Make a wisdom saving throw. Give me an intimidation check. 18. 13. Plus 7. So 20. Can I instinctually punch him? <laughs> no, because that wouldn't be your instinct. Get out of here. I don't know. That. It's only the tip of the iceberg. But hey, for real. Uh, do you think this thing was alone? I look around. Go ahead and give me a nature check. 19. You know that displacer beasts are uh, relatively known to be solitary hunters? Uh, it's probably by itself. Uh, most displacer beasts are. <laughs> I'm going to take the end of my staff and lift up its back legs. Mm-hmm. Was it a, a male or a female? Give me a nature check. 12. Uh, you wager it's probably a male. Hard to tell. Mm. All right. Well, that means no little ones around. All right. My turn to watch. Yeah. As I hook almost dead as fuck. Sweet. I'll keep an eye out. All right. Well, hold on. And I'll cast my last spell to cure wounds him. Okay. For 11 points. Yes. Oh, shit. Thanks. A lot better. All right. I'll sit down and just have Johnson always fly by helping me out. All righty. Go ahead and give me a perception check. 19. The air is still, aside from the crickets and the bugs from the night, The fire crackles a little less now that there's a missing piece of wood. I would have replaced it. 
Okay. You stare at the carcass of this recently killed displacer beast, and you're attentive, sharp, but you don't notice anything. Okay. And as morning breaks, you feel yourself a little better. Long rest? Yeah. Hey, you're smart. Do you understand things? Yeah. Do you think the height of this thing would go for sale? If it was able to... Do I know anything about that? Give me survival or arcana. 17. Uh, would this is... Arcana. Arcana. You know that Displacer Beast's hide does fetch a pretty penny amongst enchanters, specifically. Sometimes it's not really a material component. It's just more of a crafting com- crafting supply. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, now that you mentioned it, I have heard a lot of people talk about, you know, using it for crafting some sort of magical items. Well, do you want to try to skin it with me and maybe we can sell it the next town we're in? Yes. That is what I want to do. I'm getting the feeling that that's not what you want to do. I mean, I don't know anything about skinning animals. Oh, I do. Okay, then yeah, I can help hold stuff and... Yeah. Go ahead and roll survival. Helping me? Yep. 18. 18. Uh, You're able to get a good amount of hide. Probably... We'll go three by six. All right. Do I see any, like, uh... Is it just grass or... Yes, so far. Okay. What else were you looking for? The other question. Do we know to get the tentacles? Do we? You rolled Arcana? Yes. Okay. Uh, as, as I'm just like wrapping it up, ready to just go. Well, as part of the skinning process, the tentacles come with the skin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, that's weird. All right. Bundle Something to wrap up. it up with. Yeah. So. You tie it off with the tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> I wrap it up and then I take some rope and wrap it up again. All right. Cool. All right. Well, so go ahead and mark down um, uh, displacer. displacer yeah, displacer, displacer beast hide. Hell yeah. Well done. Displacer. So, your current standing. You're uh, you're only a day's out from Ormondshire. And you are doing great. <laughs> and not even a day. Wasn't it like only half a day travel? Yeah. Well, you guys camped, so it was a day. I know, but you travel. Said, half a day travel from. Yeah, because we. Half a horse day travel. Yeah. Half a horse day. You said we got to Ormondshire midday and then kept going. Very well. So, yeah, you guys are only half a day's on horse, so that's 30 miles out. I look over at Ashlot. Do you think we'll get a better price for this in a different town, or do we head back? You know, uh, like in the beginning of video games, where you just go out to the little, little right. XP gang, gang area. You're 24 miles out. Do I know if it will keep very long, like if we're traveling all the way to... To uh, Ald- Aldrin? Adelgarden? Yeah. Um, seeing as it's six days before you get to Adelgarden, it'll probably start getting pretty funky about halfway through that. Or a good three quarters of the way through that. It'd probably be best just to turn around and sell it back at home. Uh uh-huh. Go ahead and mark down you guys have gone through three days of horse feed. Why? Because you started in Orthona Farms and you've gone three days. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. I wish there was just like some special bag I could put this in and that'd be it. Uh, all right, yeah, let's run back and sell it to the... I uh, heard probably now probably uh, Miss Spelzen Spel Spelzen. Who the hell's that? It's a friend I made while you're gone. You made another friend? You didn't I mean, introduce me. 
that's a person that we, I bought we, some stuff from. We were in town for like six weeks. Never once thought to be like, hey, this well, is... I mean, you were at the temple a lot, so... That's fair. All right, let's go sell it to her. And then buy feed and start back. These poor horses. <laughs> Where the hell are we going? <laughs> Another half day's travel to Ormondshire. Um, I take it the rest of the day is spent finding, um, selling, and then getting back to you guys where you where you left off. Mm-hmm. How much could we spell, uh, send the... Sell the hide to spell yes. send? Yes. Or would she be more inclined to make an item for us out of it and we can pay her back when we get back from our trip to Whiteruff. Uh, she is not an enchanter. I uh, thought she was. She is just a creepy seller. old lady with a shop. I'm going to get her offer and then Einard's offer. Ernard? Ernard. <laughs> Einard was the professor at my college. So my first bosses. Same guy, actually, too. Yep. Small world. Uh, I wager you probably get 600 gold. Damn. I said we just camp out and fight Displacer Beast. (laughs) Uh, Yes, as both of you almost died from one. (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But we lived, right? (laughs) Now you're starting to think like John. (laughs) I, I will remove that from my stuff. And I will add on 600 gold. And oh, I'll okay. take off two gold for six days, four days worth of, sorry, eight days worth of more food and tack for the horses. Okay. That would be one gold. One gold was like 10 days. Yeah. So I'll just take off one gold. Okay. So you guys are up to 17 days. Yeah. Which after today would be 16. Yeah. And then we write off. Cool, cool. Well, if All we're right. already here and it's like, you know, day is halfway over, you want to just spend the night? Now let's just go back to that same campground. Yeah, I doubt and someone. And hope will, for the best? Yeah, I doubt someone will come back after there's displacer beast blood. Worst everywhere. comes to worst. Just another 600 gold? Yeah. I like the way we're thinking. I do too. Am I getting half that gold? Oh, yeah. Oh, 300. Okay. We bed for the night, and I will take first watch on this one. Alrighty. I'm going to go leave that gold with the rest of my gold before we leave. Okay. Go ahead and mark that down. 15. 15. Your watch goes uneventful. I'll wake up Ashlock. Oh, right, oh, yeah. Your turn. All right. Here's my Johnson. Oh, I sweet. love playing with your Johnson. It's a 15. Your watch goes uneventful as well. And you all wake up to a bright morning, undisturbed, and ready to go. Man, I feel like they count it here. It's already countered and we ride off you guys make another 48 miles of travel on your next day oh damn do we see anything interesting give me perception checks uh that's a 16 oh shit Ooh. Boy, you that's rolling. a 19 you're rolling high son both of you continue riding eyes peeled but nothing seems to spark up any uh, commotion or anything. So this day goes unabated. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. When I wake up, before we get out, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with my tinkering tools. I'm going to make it this little like, small-looking glass vial thing. I tuck that away for one of my spells. What was that? Uh, it's like smelling salts. Oh, cool. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. Let me know when we're betting for the next night. 
Uh, you are more than welcome to do so now. As we're like having dinner, I'm sitting there eating, and I look at him. Yeah. Oh shit. What? We know a cool new spell. What spell? The pearl. Identify? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I could figure something more out about that vase. I'll pull that abjuration vase out, and I'll just, it's my first time, it's going to cast it on it, see if I can find out any other properties, like specifics, I guess. It essentially acts as a a Liam and Sign Hut, but in reverse. So no adverse effects can leave it. Oh. And it leaves the inside a comfortable uh, climate-controlled environment. Oh, okay. Cool. Hmm. It's like oxygen and everything can get through, but... Mm -hmm. If we ever run into some pixies, just... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Yes. Marcus. (laughs) Marcus, you're a genius. That's why they pay me. Wait, what? Okay, I'll Moving take <laughs> I'll take first watch again. Alrighty, go ahead and roll perception. Sixteen. I take it you're getting help from Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. All right. Like I'll I'll sit there and as he's like flying around, I'll pop into his senses, feel the area with blind sense a little bit, and then pop back in and. As you start heading deeper and deeper into Ender Grove, the sounds of a light plains field starts giving way to more of a forest ambience. You start hearing the sounds of wild animals, such as wolves in the distance. You hear uh, the occasional scurrying of a critter or so. Uh, You start getting surrounded by more and more trees, and they start getting thicker and thicker as you delve deeper into the jungle, uh, into the forest. But the night is uneventful for you. Okay. And before I wake him up, I'll do my night prayer to Bahamut. Uh, Just a side note, any and all my, like, nightly prayers to Bahamut are all in Draconic. Okay. And then after I say my prayer, I'll wake him up and go to sleep. Which I understand. How? Linguist? No, it was like the one thing that I chose from like the very beginning. It was Draconic. I don't remember this. You bastard. Nonetheless, you are fast asleep as he's praying. Uh, but he stirs you awake and you take your watch. Twelve. Twelve. Um, not much happens, but you do hear the occasional, what sounds like rummaging, distant, almost faint, uh, and like a yipping cackle. Would I... John doesn't like that one. Think about anything on that list of things I know we might run into. Uh, go ahead and give me a, a nature check. Does Ashlock secretly feel like his DT Marcus is telling him to grab the adjuration vase because it's a pixie? It's a 25. <laughs> one thing that strikes your mind is perhaps goblins or even gnolls. Yeah, there'd be so we're getting ones. a bit closer to mm-hmm. Adel Garden. Correct. I'm just going to keep an eye out for goblins and gnolls then. Goblins and gnolls and trolls? Oh my. Very well. We'll continue this <laughs> process. <laughs> Marcus, how the how the hell did you fuck that up so badly, know. man? <laughs> it's a good thing I've got like ten d twenties in front of me. Do we wake up? Yes. Uh, we'll start writing. You're gonna wake up to me uh, dismantling uh, the little thing that I've attached to that dagger and re reman- remantle reassembling reassembling it onto Cassius's uh, bolt bow. Huh. I think you'd be able to do that one. 
That's pretty cool there, bud. I know. It'd be real cool one day if uh, I get to use it. Why can't you use it? I mean, just like if the right opportunity came up. Oh. That's fair. So we start riding off. And as I see this sunlight, for some reason, I'm like, light. His light. And I'll do a quick prayer as the more as the sun comes up. Mm. Like that also makes sense. And since you know draconic, you you just hear like uh, Bahamut, he who shines bright. Uh, help my friend and I on my journey on this journey. Uh, shit, it's still weird talking to you. Um, uh, yeah, well, keep us uh, safe, I guess. I don't know how. Can you do that? I don't know. Uh, and if uh, you feel just to put in my path any tips about that well that has the source in it, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. As you kind of trot by me, I... I, I probably wouldn't really cuss when I'm talking to a deity, but that's just me. Darren just, like, stops the horse in his tracks. Huh? What? Ashlock's riding on. Catch back up. Hey. Hey. What? Why, why did you... Why did you, uh... Why did you say that? I just think that, you know, they're holy or, or something... And yeah, yeah. My okay. mama always taught me not to really cuss a lot. And I just let feel me like if you're talking. Let to me it, rephrase that. How did you know what I said? What do you mean? How did you know the language I was speaking? Draconic. Yes. Well, you see, as a a kid, I didn't really have a lot of friends, and so I spent a lot of time reading books. Uh huh. And there was a a, a certain uh, story that I, I followed through several of the books where. The main character ended up being like a dragon slayer, and I thought it was really cool, and I kind of wanted to be like him, and so I kind of uh-huh. studied draconic as a kid. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, me, me too. Yep. But yeah, like I said, my mama doesn't like me to cuss, and so I probably wouldn't cuss when talking to a well holy being. I see your point, and I raise you that this is still new to me, so I feel like he would give me a couple of extra chances to not curse in his presence. I mean, I'm not saying that he's going to, like, smite you or anything. It's just a way to show him respect. He gets, like, super, like, sweaty. Do you you think he's going to smite me? I just said he's not going to smite you. Oh, Hey, let's not mess around about God smiting. They do some weird shit, man. I mean, just what I know of God's, it doesn't seem like Bahamut really like the smite you for cussing kind of God. Yeah, you'd have to be like a murderer for him to do that, I guess. Roll a death saving throw, John. <laughs> <laughs> you failed. <laughs> I failed with a natural one. Yeah. Well... Yes, I gotta find a new friend. Just his body is limp on the horse. <laughs> uh, well, sh- sh- shit. If you heard me praying, then the temple at uh, Ormanshire gave me a quest. Okay. So apparently, I'm all bright and shiny to them. Uh, there's, I don't go like. Apparently, there's a source missing of light. Sensor. Sensor. Sorry. This whole time. That's worse. Sensor of light missing, and it's in a well covered by vines. It's just a sensor. Like, it carries smoke. Uh, I got it, George. Mm-hmm. But it's not my quest. Hey, hey. Now I understand. A sensor missing. It's in a well covered by vines surrounded in green liquid. Where? South. How far south? South. 
She did not say. She just said that she saw it in a vision. He. He. I, I got the he too. Don't worry, George. John's not paying attention to shit. Who put who put Darren's life in my hand? You did. <laughs> Do I know of a well to the south covered in vines and green liquid shit? Give me a history check. You know I'm good at those. With this advantage because Darren's the one telling you. 15. Doesn't seem to strike a, a chord or bring up anything for you. Well, I mean, I know a lot of civilizations use wells around the area, but I mean, that could be anywhere. Yeah. Very well, we're up in this great library at a white roof and try to do some more research. And when we headed back down to Ormondshire and go farther south to look for it. Well, that's going to put a, a bit of a time delay on the whole horse stable thing. But I guess that's fine. I'll help you with that. Uh, oh, I mean, if you want to. Yeah, I wasn't assuming you would. No, I really want to, actually. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Mm. To be in a quest given by a god? Yeah. That's kind of fucking awesome, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Sweet. Hey, I want to try something. Oh, God. And I see a broken <laughs> limb on the ground, and I try to get the ju- horse to jump over it while I'm on it. Oh, shit. Give me an animal handling check. That's a 17. You make a small gallop, and it trots over the branch easily. Do you see that? That was so good, man. I'm getting good at this. You are. Proud of you. Yeah. It's it's a lot of science to it, really. Yeah. I mean, I told you it would help. Yeah. Anyway, right on. For lunch, we're having, like we did the past couple of days, special jerky from the people. Uh, from Je- Josie. Josie's jerky? Josie's jerky. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Natural 20. I love it. Darren, mm-hmm. you hear distant calls or yips, high pitched and scattered, but they seem to be coming from the direction you are heading. So, like, we're getting closer to it? Uh, somewhat. Hey, you hear that? I slow down a bit and listen. Do I hear it? Give me a perception check. 21. You do. You pick up on it as you slow down. Take some time to open your awareness. To open your ears. Um, but this is happening as you all are um, getting close to the end of the day's travel. So you're not quite sure how far away they are. Do you all start making preparations for camp? How far away do they sound? Uh, give me a survival check. Eight. Nineteen. Probably over 300 feet away. So not too far? Not too far, not too close either. Is it dark yet? Uh, it's getting pretty dark. The sun is just on the horizon. What do you think? Um, I don't really want to camp with them hanging out. I've, I read that there's a lot of gnolls, goblins, that kind of stuff. Lizard folk. Yeah. Uh, not quite sure what it is, but none of those are friendly. No, not at all. Um, what we could do, Brett, yes, yeah, we camp. Tie the horses close to us. Okay. And uh, you haven't seen me do this, but I can move some earth. And I can make a perimeter of holes around. Okay. How does that sound? Uh, What if we scout ahead and just kind of figure out what it is? Like right now, right now? Yeah. All right. Cast light on my staff. Make it bright. Okay. Not like that. Make it dim. Turn it 
turn it off. You know, when we go in the woods, we won't be able to see. Okay. Because it's blocked by the sun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's blocked by the sun. How we'll be able to see and scout if we can't see? Through this guy. And I point up to Rodney's head floating above me. Oh. Who can see in the dark. Uh Uh-huh. And can go really far ahead of us to see what it is. So, okay. Gotcha. Turn it off and I'll wait. And I send him 300 yards away? Or 300 Mm -hmm. feet away? Okay. Does he see anything? Give me a perception check. 15. Rodney starts heading out in that direction. And as the sounds start growing louder and louder, he starts seeing what looks like torch lights soft and off in the distance he moves in closer and closer and he starts stumbling upon what looks like some sort of celebration perhaps he sees these creatures of fur and elongated necks this strange curvature to their body these hind legs that stand bipedal very feral faces then they seem to be encircling this sort of wooden fixture of some sort almost like an idol drenched in what you presume to be some sort of reddish fabric and upon closer inspection you realize it's not a dyed red it's drenched in blood and it's not just any old fabric. It seems to be some sort of uh, tunic of some sort. And it's draped over this wooden idol that the creatures are just kind of yelling at or giving out those yips. And you see smaller folk of green skin kind of in their, amongst their midst, in their ranks. And you see one of these large bipedal furry creatures make its way closer to the um, this idol. And you see it start just going to town on it. Just claw after claw after claw. Just breaking wood bits after wood bit. Chomping down on it and it just starts disassembling all of it. Meanwhile, all these other creatures surrounding it just start going wild and the loudness starts to increase. Thus, this creature goes on a rampage on this totemic idol. You see one of the, like, feral, almost hyena-like creatures. Kind of almost in in uh, reverence to this act or whatever kind of get sidetracked or its eye catches something in your direction and moves its eye in in the direction of Rodney and it just stops and then it just lets out this and quiet stills the area snap it back I could and they all turn to the creature who's just staring daggers at Rodney what do you do uh we're pulling a was it um what's the third Star Wars uh New Hope the uh Return of the Jedi Return of the Jedi Mm -hmm. um whenever they try to make C-3PO seem like the deity mm. who's angry. <laughs> I'm going to instruct Rodney. Uh, pretend you're that, that deity and just be really pissed off and yell at him. I say, I am, I am furious. As, I am. As he starts talking, I, I don't hear him talking, but I lean over to Ashlock. Tell him to use a better voice than the one he fucking has. I'm 
It's so mad at whatever it is you're doing. How you, dare you? How you, dare you? Use use the uh, the uh, Darren doing draconic voice. Do that one. And while he's doing this, I'm going to pull out Keisha's bow and uh, flip that little switch and say, hey, it's time. And start taking off in that direction. You oh. all hear a Fuck. wave of cackling and yipping and large, uh, very ominous growls coming from the direction that Rodney was in. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. Oh, fuck. Okay. We're going to die. We're, we're like really far away. Just range stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Range and run away. So excited. We don't have proficiency of fighting on fucking horses. I thought we got off the horses. No. We're still oh. on them. Then get off your horse. Get off your high horse, John. It runs so much faster than me. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you all next time on the Out of Character Adventure podcast. Okay. Bye. Bye.